I'm John Rogers. I'm a professor of material science and engineering uh, at University of Illinois. Uh, and we have programs in um, electronic and optical materials and devices that are enabled by new material strategies with an emphasis on integration with the human body in the context of basic science around biological processes or you know, tools that could be re uh, relevant for clinical medicine. We've looked at three organ systems uh, in the body in terms of uh, creating optoelectronic devices that integrate in a very natural and conformal way with the body. Uh, one is uh, skin-mounted electronics where we form integration, uh, integrated collections of uh, transistors and sensors, uh, LEDs, photo detectors that uh, are in the physical form of the epidermis. So uh, a few tens of microns in thickness, uh, stretchable, uh, soft and tacky so that they form uh, an intimate contact with the body. Uh, at the point of the skin, uh, where the skin is really used as a window for assessing health and wellness, uh, physiological status, uh, so for continuous monitoring. Uh, in that case, and that could be uh, relevant for, for fitness and personal health, uh, but also for monitoring uh, patients that are in a clinical setting. Uh, a lot of those same concepts uh, can be applied to devices that go on the heart, either as sheets or as full 3D membranes uh, that completely envelop the outside of the heart uh, and have the ability to monitor uh, temperature and, and pH, uh, blood oxygenation, uh, they can uh, stimulate electrically uh, and they can measure electrical properties of the tissue as the uh, heart is beating. Uh, and that kind of tool can be useful for uh, research in cardiac science. Uh, and then longer term, uh, you can imagine that class of devices an advanced implant for doing uh, you know, uh, sophisticated forms of pacemaking defibrillation. Uh, and then the third organ system that we have studied uh, is the brain. And the brain is an electrical system. And so the ability to build high quality electrical electronics onto the surface of the brain or more recently down into the depth of the brain uh, can be very powerful in terms of basic studies of neuroscience as well as uh, clinical and surgical diagnostics and tools for certain uh, surgical procedures that are performed uh, on the brain. So in that context, one of our most recent efforts is to try to move beyond surface mounted sheets, whether it's integrated with the epidermis onto the epicardial surface or onto the surface of the brain and get down into the depth uh, of the tissue uh, because there are a lot of things you can do on the surface. It has the advantage it's completely non-invasive, but ultimately organs are three-dimensional constructs with important processes happening down into the depth. Uh, and that represents for us kind of a frontier area. The question is how do you get high-quality optoelectronic devices into the depth of the brain, for instance? Uh, and that's a problem we've been thinking about and working on uh, for a while. Uh, and we've really initiated targeted efforts maybe two and a half years ago on the notion of integrating uh, LEDs, light sources, uh, detectors, down into the brain uh, in the context of an emerging uh, capability in neuroscience known as uh, optogenetics. Uh, so the key is to make the devices as small as possible, as thin as possible, and operate them in a way that uh, avoids any excessive uh, heating. Uh, and so we've been working on that problem for a while and now have uh, a set of devices and strategies that seems to be effective uh, in that context. Uh, and the schemes really involve making uh, high quality indium gallium nitride, uh, indium gallium phosphide, uh, other kinds of inorganic LEDs in ultra miniaturized forms. So these are devices that are thousands of times smaller than conventional LEDs, just a few microns in thickness um, and you know uh, tens of microns in lateral dimensions or even smaller. So comparable to the size of an individual cell uh, in the brain. Uh, we can mount those devices on ultra thin uh, plastic filaments uh, that we can jet in inject uh, with a releasable needle uh, down into the depth of the brain. So you've displaced a really minimal amount of tissue, yet you've embedded high quality optoelectronics uh, into the brain. Uh, and when coupled with a wireless uh, powering system, we can then turn on and off light sources uh, in the brain. We can measure temperature increases. We have photo detectors, so we can not only do optogenetic stimulation, but we can actually do very simple forms of spectroscopy. So we have light sources, we have photo detectors, we measure scattering, absorption, at different wavelengths. So it pr creates a really powerful toolkit of capabilities uh, that I think is creating a lot of enthusiasm in the neuroscience community. We work closely with experts in optogenetics to take our devices, get them into real animal models, and use them for you know, kind of cutting edge experiments uh, in neuroscience. So we shave the active devices right off the semiconductor wafer, throw the wafer away, uh, and then really uh, use those uh, ultra miniaturized devices uh, as building block components 
components to form systems that are on very thin, flexible plastic strips, essentially, uh, that are much more mechanically uh, and geometrically in terms of the size of the devices compatible with the brain, which is a very soft tissue. And so the notion of uh, trying to deliver more conventional wafer-based technologies into the brain becomes a very daunting challenge uh, around you know, damage to the tissue and uh, long-term viability. And it was an exciting direction for us to go because, as I would mentioned before, we'd done lots of things on surfaces and we'd wanted to get things down into the depth, but we want, wanted to do that with a purpose, not just to show we could you know, put things down in the brain, but in the context of something that kind of made sense uh, and that people w were, were interested in. Uh, and optogenetics, as I mentioned before, although it's a very powerful biological technique and research tool, uh, the optical engineering of how to get the light down in there is very primitive. Uh, and so people have been wishing for a better solution uh, in terms of the hardware because you know, the fiber optic going down into a mouse model is a very small animal. Uh, the fiber is actually a pretty big chunk of glass coming down into a very tiny uh, brain. And then you seal it up and then you still have them connected to a laser that's sitting on an optics table next to their cage. So you can do some things, but you can't do complex social interactions. The kind of environment in which they can move is constrained by the fact that you have the fiber coming out of their head. Uh, and you're doing all these complex behavioral studies, you have to wonder, is the fiber sort of changing their natural uh, you know, behaviors and sort of influencing the experiment. So people had been kind of thinking about, you know, uh, advanced approaches. And it was just great timing in terms of the kind of capabilities and materials science uh, techniques that we were developing for the sheets anyway, which involve very thin, very tiny devices. Uh, we felt like we could address that problem. You know, we're material scientists, device guys, widget guys. Um, I wouldn't try to pass myself off as a neuroscientist. I'm absolutely not that. I'm also not a clinician. So in order to do meaningful things, I think you have to establish productive, collaborative relationships with folks who are experts in those areas. And we think that's an exciting area. I would say in a general sense, the idea of bringing advanced optical engineering, optoelectronics to the human body uh, is a real frontier area where uh, optical engineers can make a, a big contribution. Optogenetics is just one example uh, of many cases where uh, bringing light into tissues of the body can uh, offer powerful diagnostics or interventional capabilities or you know, tools for doing basic science scientific research.